Hey everyone, it's Patrick from the Babylon JS team. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about one of the big new features in our 4.2 release for the Node Material Editor, which are PBR nodes. So what we can do with PBR nodes in Node Material is we can use our standard metallic roughness workflow that we would use for any of our assets in Babylon. Uh, but we can now create custom shaders for those, and that, that's actually really exciting. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, enable the new PBR Next features like sheen, clear coat, uh, refraction, subsurface scattering right in Node Material and still give you all the power that you need with Node Material. And what we're going to do is over the next few videos, we're going to build up to this. Now, this is the demo that we used in our 4.2 release. And this is using a PBR workflow using Node Material. And you can see we're getting uh, environment light here on the bottle. Uh, we're getting a lot of refraction in the liquid and in the bottle itself. Uh, we've got metallic happening on the edges of the label and non-metallic happening in the label itself. Uh, and so what we're able to do is use all of that to create a custom shader and then throw it in the environment to do things like our transparent shadow here. So we wanted to break down the scene and show you how we created this, uh, but there are a few things that we need to go through first. And so in this first video, what we're gonna do is just walk through the new nodes and show you uh, what has changed. So let me hop over here to the node material editor. And so uh, you'll notice in our node material editor, we have a whole new category of PBR nodes. Now these are all the nodes that you will use uh, when creating a PBR shader. Uh, so let me pull our fragment output over here to give us a little space and get rid of our color four. And you'll notice we are no longer compiling correctly because we don't have enough inputs. And so let me bring in our PBR metallic roughness node. So you'll see this node is actually one of the bigger nodes that we have here. It's There's a lot going on here. And that's why we want to take a minute to kind of go through this and let you know what's changed and what you have to pay attention to. So if we look at the PBR metallic roughness node, uh, the first thing you'll notice is the color. So the color is this blue color, uh, which is different than uh, most of the other nodes in our in our system. And that is to let you know that there is a new set of nodes that work together and they all use this blue color and all of these uh, PBR nodes use this blue color. There's also a, a secondary thing to note uh, down towards the bottom here, we have a new icon that you're seeing on the, the bottom input ports. And that icon means that this is a subnode. So reflection is this reflection subnode over here. And so you will wire the reflection subnode here. And you can only wire the reflection subnode to this section. And so that's why we created the, the custom icon. So you know, uh, if you see this icon, it requires a subnode and can only be wired to something that accepts a subnode. Um, so uh, let me walk through quickly on the inputs here. Uh, we have all the inputs uh, kind of categorized and towards the top are more of the required nodes to get your shader to compile. And then towards the bottom here are all of the optional nodes. So any one of these sub nodes is an optional node. You don't need to use it. Uh, but if you want to enable that feature like clear coat, you obviously have to wire in a clear coat sub node. Uh, from the output side, um, all of the ports that are output uh, into the rest of the graph are um, the, the lighting calculation outputs of the node. And the most important one is lighting. So if I just take this and wire it to my fragment output, that is the final contribution of all, the, uh, of, all of the lighting calculations in the PBR node for the shader. And you can wire that straight into the fragment output and you will get the, the final render. We do have also all of the rest of the uh, components split out. So let's say, for example, you want to take the diffuse contribution of direct lights and diffuse contribution of indirect lights and do something else to them before you combine them back into the specular direct and specular indirect contributions. You can do that here. Uh, so you will, uh, you know, take this output and do something else with it and then combine it back with the rest of the contributions and then that's the other way you could wire this node. Now, there's an important thing to note here. Um, the lighting output uh, is a gamma space output. So when I wire lighting directly in here, we're wiring a gamma space output to this RGB input, which expects a gamma space input. 
Um, all of the rest of these are linear space. We've not done the conversion back to gamma space. So um, if you want to do something with any of the components of the, the light calculation, note that these are in linear space and you will need to convert them to gamma space before you feed them back into the fragment output. So you can see also here that uh, we don't have a compiling shader because we don't have enough things wired up in the shader for it to compile. And so as we wire things in, you'll notice it tries to recompile. And once we get enough components in that it will compile correctly, it will compile and our preview will show up. So let's start at the top. Uh, the first thing we need is a world position. That one's easy because it's already here for our vertex output. So let me wire that in. And let me just grab all of these and move them up out of the way. Uh, the next would be a world normal. Uh, we don't have that in the graph yet, so let me grab one from mesh. Uh, world normal is right there, and we'll wire that in, and then we'll move these up a little bit. And then uh, perturbed normal would be is if, if I have a normal map. Uh, I would use the same perturbed normal uh, node that we use for our regular lighting nodes and wire in my uh, normal map with a texture. Now that one isn't necessary. If you have a texture and you want to use it, you will use this, uh, this input. Otherwise, you can leave it blank. Um, next would be base color. So let me just drag out a base color here. We'll give it a name of base color. And this is a gamma space node. Um, as we were talking about here, all of these uh, components are linear space, and this is a gamma space output. Um, all the inputs here require a linear space input. So knowing that my color node is typically a gamma space uh, input, um, I have to do a conversion. Now I could do a conversion with a power node and, and convert that way manually, but uh, what we did with this release is we tried to save you a few steps here and there where we could. So uh, in base color, you'll notice we now have a convert to linear space checkbox or a toggle. So I'm toggling that over to linear space. And what happens is when I open up my picker, the colors that I'm seeing are gamma space colors. But because I have chosen convert to linear space, what it does is it passes in the linear values into the metallic roughness node. So we don't have to do that, that conversion manually. And we also have done that on our texture node as well. So if I grab an input texture here, you'll notice um, we also allow the convert to linear space. And if you do know that you're putting in values that are linear space values, or we have a linear space texture and we need to convert to gamma space, we've also added that in as well. It's probably not gonna be used as much, but we figured since we were putting in the convert to linear space, we would also allow you to convert to gamma space as well. So let me get rid of those two. We don't need those. Um, the next part is metallic. So I'm just gonna drag out a float here and we'll call it metallic. And we'll make this a metallic object of one. And then the next one I'm gonna pull out is roughness. And you'll see all of a sudden we, um, we built successfully. And so the output changed, it is all black and I'll explain why that is. Um, but let me put in roughness and we will make this a roughness of 0 0.5. Okay, so now you can see we have a metallic rough PBR node rendering here in the preview. Now, the reason that uh, it was black at first is because there is there are, there's two reasons for that. Uh, in this preview, we don't have a uh, environment light. Um, and so it, the reflection from the, uh, or the contribution from the reflections in the scene aren't there. It's considered black. And so that's why you're seeing black there. The other part is that we haven't wired up anything for reflection. So even if we did have a, an IBL in this preview window, there was nothing wired into reflection. And so it's not reflecting anything. But you can see this is the bare minimum of what you need to set up a PBR node. So the only other one that I would always suggest, um, you know, you can add in your ambient occlusion or opacity if you have those things, index or refraction if you're working with glass, um, ambient color if you're working with a, kind of an ambient scene color. Um, and then the rest of the subnodes, um, the one that's probably the most re important is reflection. So let me go grab a reflection node. So uh, 
part of the power of, of PBR rendering is the fact that you get reflections from the environment and lighting from the environment. Um, the only way to do that is to wire up our reflection node. So you can see this is a subnode and it's going into a subnode slot. Uh, the, the icons match. Um, the colors also match, telling you this is a PBR only node and that this node will only work with the PBR metallic roughness node. Um, and you, you can see that I could uh, bring in a color. So let's say I want to bring in a custom uh, cube map for reflections in this shader. I could bring in a uh, texture node and wire in a custom cube map into color. But if I don't, if I just leave it the way it is and have my uh, position and my world uh, matrix wired up and, and wire this in, it's going to use whatever is in the scene. So in your scene, if you set an IBL, uh, now you will get the IBL reflections. So this is basically um, the minimum bar for what you want to set up. And uh, from there, we can do other things. So if I wanna add an opacity and then wire in my alpha, I can do that. Um, if I want to uh, do something else with um, my individual uh, uh, contributions from the, the different lighting components, I can do that. Um, but then this is, this is basically all we need to know. Um, the other subnodes uh, we will go through as we need them. Um, but let me pull them out really quickly just so you can see what they look like. Uh, we've got uh, anisotropy. So if we want anisotropic reflections on something, um, these are the inputs that we would use and then wire up anisotropy. Uh, our clear coat uh, is a little bit bigger and has all of the things that we would need for a clear coat, including our you know normal map, uh, roughness, intensity, index of refraction. Um, we can tint at distance. Um, so all of those things are uh, controllable there. Um, We've looked at reflection, our refraction node. So uh, for all of our refractions through glass or uh, a translucent material um, would be con would be uh, handled by this one. Uh, we have our sheen node. And then uh, the sheen node is, uh, can, uh, it will take in a sheen color. So if we uh, have a specific color uh, for the sheen on a surface, or if we want to uh, control um, the sheen at different angles, we can actually pass in a texture. Um, intensity will show you how much sheen is in a specific area, so you can also pass in a texture for that as well if you want to have some parts of your UV space in uh, that have sheen and others that don't. Um, and then also the roughness. Same thing, you can pass in either a float or a texture. Um, and then subsurface here. So uh, the refraction node actually does not go in here and you'll notice there is nothing here for refraction. Uh, the refraction node actually wires to the subsurface node. So you would actually wire it this way. So uh, refraction is the only um, node that will be kind of too deep, but it is another subnode. So subsurface is a subnode of our PBR node, which is right there. And then uh, refraction is a subnode of subsurface. So the subsurface node um, we is is used for any transmission uh, through a, a, an object. So let's say uh, we have a gummy bear which has some you know transmitted light coming through it. Uh, we would use our subsurface node to create the thickness, uh, both the min and max thickness. And if you have a thickness map. Um, you would uh, set up that calculation through, for example, a LERP, and then pass the, the um, output of those nodes into thickness. Um, if there's a tint color, um, the translucency intensity is, is how translucent the object is, and then the diffusion at distance, uh, it, it's a color per channel. So um, that is the basics of the PBR nodes. and. Uh, over the next few videos, what we're going to do is we're going to start building several different assets using um, some very simple uh, materials so that we can show here is a standard setup using uh, our environment light and a metallic roughness workflow. Uh, we're going to show you some uh, 
transmission and subsurface scattering. Uh, and then we'll build right into the glass asset. So uh, we're kind of going to take this in smaller steps so it's a little bit more digestible and not so fire hosey to, to take in. So I um, hope that uh, this is a good primer to get us set up for the next video. And I hope that uh, you come with us for the rest of the journey. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you want to know when those next videos are coming out, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon at the bottom. And uh, thank you for coming along, and we hope you have a great day. Take care.